Hello, everyone. Today, I want to tell you about my plot twist. Every story has one. It's when a wrench is thrown in the story, and suddenly all of the characters have to suddenly scramble around and figure out a way to resolve with a happy ending. I had one of those moments. It was very subtle, more of a string of events, but it all began when I just took the Intro to Engineering Design class here at UW-Madison. This class was the reason that I became an engineer. We were given a design project, um, and ours was to create a bone-breaking machine. So this machine was supposed to break chicken bones in certain ways to simulate actual bone breaks in humans to get elementary and middle school students excited about biomedical engineering careers. Although this project was phenomenal, it was more the eureka moments of actually working on a team, the team communication skills I cultivated, and the actual act of engineering that stuck with me. However, about a year after I took this class, it was phased out by budget cuts. This was my plot twist. While looking forward at the opportunities that lay before me, I realized that none of them incorporated teams of interdisciplinary students working on actual design projects. At this point, I realized that project-based interdisciplinary learning needs to be an integral aspect of our educational system. So after this realization, I found a team of passionate individuals that thought likewise and created the premier organization for student adventures on campus, Insight Wisconsin. It's a very vague name, right? Tells a lot about us. You know, I thought it sounded a little better than the students that created some really cool stuff. But anyways, we give the opportunity for our members to work on interdisciplinary teams with representation from almost every single college on campus to work on structured design projects. These projects are proposed by researchers on campus, companies in the area, and even members themselves can pitch their own ideas for projects. By implementing a series of deadlines, design reviews, and presentations, we help these teams go from idea to prototype within a semester or a year. So just to give a little background of where we're at right now, we have over 40 active members working on eight different project teams. These projects span all different disciplines here at EW. We have one team working with a botany professor on campus to create a device that would simulate zero gravity for plants. Another team is working on a member pitch project to create a supermarket app that would be able to take your input of groceries and spit out the cheapest supermarket in your area. We also have teams working with companies like Study Blue, which is kind of like Chegg, if you know what that is, to create a web platform that would be able to condense multiple students' notes into one comprehensive study guide. Above all else, though, we wish to showcase the innovative potential of these undergraduates and prove the necessity for project-based learning in our educational system. When starting a business or organization, I had heard the saying, don't do it, just to do it. Do it because no one else will. And because of Insight Wisconsin, there will be a model for project-based interdisciplinary learning that can be tested, iterated, and solidified to be used, to be used in a university classroom setting. So I'm not pretending that I somehow stumbled upon this great idea for project-based learning. This idea has been tested, implemented, and succeeded with, even at our own university. One of the model programs here at UW is the BME Design Program, the Biomedical Engineering Department. This curriculum utilizes a four-phase um, design curriculum going through um, peer mentoring, guided design fundamentals, independent learning, and a senior capstone design phase. The biomedical engineers that go through the six class series are effectively primed for careers in their respective fields. Not only are these students actually creating viable solutions to their clients' problems and creating actual intellectual property, but they're also cultivating skills that they wouldn't otherwise learn in a conventional classroom setting. I mean, these students are actually learning team collaboration skills. They're learning how to relay technical information to other members of their group, and they're actually learning how to engineer. So why am I up here if I think that this already exists, even at our own university? The only problem with curricula that revolve around a single major, biomedical engineering, for example, is that every team consists of strictly biomedical engineers. Biomedical engineers that have the same pursuits in their careers, biomedical engineers that take the same classes, learn the same content, and are tested on the same material, biomedical engineers that think the same way because that's how they're taught. This is not a viable way of creating truly innovative solutions. 
You need to be able to have as many different backgrounds and perspectives as possible on each of these teams to tr create a truly diverse team. So let's look at an example when diverse teams were successful. Imagine for a second that Steve Jobs attempted to create Apple One from scratch, or that Steve Wozniak decided to create Apple computers on his own. Do you think we'd be walking around with iPhones in our pockets right now? I mean, could you imagine a world where you couldn't use Snapchat on your iPhone? I mean, I couldn't imagine a world without my mom Snapchatting me all the time. Kind of weird, but you know. But anyways, I mean, Jobs was a literature, poetry, and physics major, while Wozniak was a technical guru. No wonder they were so successful when they have such superb individual skill sets. Interestingly, though, in the book Founders at Work, Wozniak mentions that him and Jobs weren't even similar personalities. So how can two people that have such differing personalities create one of the most innovative products of all time, the Apple II? It was not their individual skill sets that allowed, them to, that allowed them to succeed. It was their ability to collaborate that shined bright. The whole was greater than the sum of the parts when it came to Apple. So let's fast forward 40 years and see what sort of progress the small Silicon Valley startup has created for itself. They must be doing something differently, right, to be so successful? In an article by Adam Lashinsky in Fortune, he noted that specialization is the norm at Apple, with each role having no authority over any other aspect of their project. Jennifer Bailey, the executive behind Apple's online store, has absolutely no authority over any of the photographs on her own site. That's handled by the graphics art department at Apple. This specialization allows for the brightest minds that work at Apple to devote all of their time and energy to what they're best at. And this is a stellar model for Apple. I mean, they're, they're able to create truly impressive, intricate, and successful products. But what happens when one member of these teams cannot adequately communicate their technical information to other members of their group? I mean, you can have the brightest minds working on the latest and greatest iPhone design, which I'm sure that they are. But if you cannot accurately relay your information to other members of your group, then there will be no product. Within Insight Wisconsin, we want to be able to cultivate these teamwork and, and communication skills at the earliest age possible. So we don't distribute teams based on their majors. Their majors don't take into account their backgrounds and skill sets. Instead, we distribute teams based on their interests, number one, and their self-proclaimed skill sets, number two. We have members rank themselves on a scale of one to five in four different categories. The tinkerers, the hackers, the business tycoons, and the leaders. By ensuring that each of our teams has even numbers in each of these skill sets, we can make sure that there are as many different backgrounds and perspectives as possible on each of these teams. This Dispersion of backgrounds and skill sets on each team allows for our members to practice in a controlled setting, working with people of differing opinions. So let's look, for example, at our solar lamps team. This team is working with a human ecology professor on campus that goes to this community in Kenya and wants to be able to create cheap solar lamps out of materials that they already have in their communities. A tinkerer personality may try to solve this problem with concrete laws of physics and fabrication techniques. A hacker may try to solve this problem with Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, and lots and lots of coding. A business tycoon may focus on the monetary limitations associated with the project, while a leader personality may try to outsource for technical expertise that the team does not already possess. Each of these skill sets lends a different hand to the project and creates truly diverse and creative solutions that have not already been created. So let's look at this problem from a university perspective. Incorporating project-based learning in our educational system is extremely beneficial for furthering research on campus. Within Inside Wisconsin, most of our clients are already researchers and faculty members here at UW and are willing to fund their own projects. This, from this fact, we know that there's a market for innovative ideas and solutions, even at a university level. Imagine if every single college on campus could submit ideas for teams of students to work on. Biological science labs could submit ideas for new sampling technologies or proteins. 
The School for Education could submit challenges for students to create new innovative STEM assessments that would better test students' abilities in the sciences. The Human Ecology Department could ask students to create biomass briquettes out of materials in third world countries, like we already have a team working on. While investing in its students' skills, the university would also be furthering the mentality that they are one of the greatest research institutions in the world. Ultimately, though, we will not achieve what we do not attempt. And we cannot fear thinking differently about how we educate our students and organize our teams, regardless of what organization we're working with. I came across my plot twist pretty early on in life. However, I'm sure everyone in this room will come, will come across their own and more after that. And what I've learned from mine is that it's not what you do when it hits, it's what you do in the wake of your plot twist that matters. And I hope that everyone in this room can handle it with grace and truly make a difference by thinking differently. Thank you.